It's vintage time in the Barossa Valley, north of Adelaide. And the harvest is looking good. The Koleski family has been growing grapes here at Grenock for seven generations. The technology may have changed, but otherwise things are done largely as they've always been done. And that's turned these proud traditionalists into unwitting trendsetters. Organics is trendy now and yes, some people see it as a, as a revolution, but it is going back to basics, going back to what's been happening for thousands of years. Scrub east block, so some nice yes. ripe Shiraz for yeah, fortifying. So, um, Troy Koleski yeah, is an award-winning so, uh, winemaker um, who's worked for yeah, many of the industry's be... top labels. Shrivel and dimple there, so... Yeah, they look nice when he and brother yeah, Tony um, started JMK, making their so own wine 16 years ago, so, so, they weren't targeting any so new age here. consumer. Um, so when we started winery in 2002, it was very logical to continue that organic natural theme into the winery. So basically the entire philosophy is to get it right in the vineyard. If you've got good healthy soil, you've got naturally healthy vines and good quality grapes. And then there's not really too much you need to do with it in the winery. It's 20 years since the Koleski vineyard became the first in the Barossa to be officially certified organic, thanks to the vision of Troy's father, John Koleski. He also introduced biodynamics, with practices such as farming according to phases of the moon and making biological sprays out of manure and quartz buried in cow horns. In a traditional place like the Barossa, that raised more than a few eyebrows. And did uh, some of the people in the valley think that you were fully certified insane at that same stage? We, we did have some rude remarks given to us, yes. It, it used to upset me for the start, but eventually I got thick-skinned about it and I thought, well, I don't really care what anyone else thinks. I, I do what we believe in and what we feel is right, and I think, I think uh, it's, it's paid off. Yeah. Koleski wines are not only certified organic and biodynamic, they're also vegan friendly, made without the use of animal products. What animal products could possibly wind up in wine barrels, you ask? Well, quite a few. Milk, eggs and the ground up float bladder of the sturgeon fish. Yes, fish, or icing glass as it's known in the trade. It's one of numerous fining agents that are often used to remove cloudiness or bitterness in wine, beer and cider. Back when I worked for other wineries, yeah, 90 plus percent of the wines um, did have some sort of fining agent added and I believe that's probably still true today. The agents don't end up in the finished wine. They're filtered out before bottling yes. and Troy Koleski initially thought nothing of using them. Fining was conventional practice taught at university, but his ideas have changed. It was more when we started making our own wine, and it's all about why add something if you don't have to. So I think you know you're only adding these products because something is not quite right earlier in the process. It's a philosophy that's paying off in the most unlikely of places. Australia has been identified as one of the world's fastest growing vegan markets. And more than two million Australians say they're vegetarians or mostly vegetarian, according to Roy Morgan Research. But you don't have to eschew meat and fish to enjoy vegan wine. That marble is looking fantastic, isn't it? Steak is the signature dish at this restaurant on Queensland's Gold Coast. There are 22 different cuts, and diners compare them with a number of biodynamic and vegan wines. It's really sort of grown over the last, I would say, oh, seven or eight years. I've seen a huge amount of biodynamic wines come on the market and people are interested in it. And what do you have here that's vegan? Uh, we have the Koleski, 
the, that's the Kleski, so Barossa, Barossa Valley wine. And as we can see here, we have the biodynamic logo on it, so, so obviously vegan suitable as well. Uh, we have a Bill Downey Pinot from Gippsland, so and this is a preservative free wine. And is that also something which people are looking for? Definitely, definitely. So yes. wines without additives? Yeah, minimalistic techniques, healthier for the consumer. That one, so definitely an, an increase there. Hi guys, how are you today? Welcome to Moomoo. Restaurant so, owner Stephen Adams there? sees nothing ironic in a steakhouse embracing vegan you. wine. We're looking for a broad spectrum of wines, obviously high quality wines that resonate well with our venues, brands that we can trust, not necessarily brands that are known. We're willing to teach our customers about different brands. And diner Natalie Clark is willing to be taught. Would it surprise you to know that conventional white wines uh, often use the swim bladder of a sturgeon fish to find the wine? Yes, that would surprise me. I wasn't aware of that, no. Um, does that turn you off, white wines? <laughs> Uh, probably not enough to turn me off, no. <laughs> Would it be enough to make you try a vegan wine? Yes, definitely. Yes, if that was an option, I think I would choose that, yes, now. <laughs> I guess the good thing about vegan wine, it is good for everybody. So obviously for the vegans, but equally it's good for, you know, the people that love their big juicy steak. So when we started, organic was very much on the fringe, often made by hippies and the like, I suppose you would say. Uh, but now organic wine is becoming more mainstream. So every year there's more and more wineries, vineyards converting to organics. I think when we started, there was only maybe not even a dozen organic producers in Australia. And now there's hundreds of organic producers. It's not just smaller wineries such as Kaleski's that are tapping into the vegan market. One of the biggest names in the business, Yolumba, says all of its wines produced since 2011 are vegan friendly. And here in McLaren Vale, south of Adelaide, Ango family winemakers have also jumped on board. We continue to see queries into our websites about is this product vegan friendly. It is the number one question that we get asked and it's always nice to be able to reply and say yes it is and that there's no impact on quality because of that. The first step in making vegan wine is having an organic vineyard. All of Angove's 800 plus hectares here and in Renmark will be certified organic by next year. Here, what are they? Lots of different types of weeds. This is actually wild rocket, so you can actually... Richard Angove says one of the extra costs of organic viticulture is labour for removing weeds yes. and pests. We have indeed. We've had a bit of a snail problem due to a couple of wetter winters. And How la many did you take out one year? About two tonnes of snails. Two tonnes, um, by hand? By hand, but last year we invested in a herd of Indian runner ducks, 15 runner ducks, and they have done an amazing job. Vine posts are also an extra expense. They can't be cheap, chemically treated pine. Instead, they're made from recycled car tyres. So in a vineyard this size, how much extra might you be looking at? Uh, you, you might be looking at, you know, upwards of a couple of hundred thousand dollars. Wow. Yep. I think it's probably between 30 and 40 percent more expensive to make an organic wine than it is and most of that is in the vineyard expense. And do you recoup that in the sales? Uh, yes, if you're selling organic grapes they would command a 100 percent premium in organic grapes in the market at the moment. After five years of making an organic wine range, Angove decided to go the whole hog, so to speak, and make them vegan as well. And that was an evolution of looking at what we're doing in the vineyard. We're managing this vineyard as best we possibly can for grape flavour. Let's take it a step further in the winery. That's one approval from vegans and non-vegans alike. Even people like Joyce Ridley, who actually eats fish swim bladder, braised with dried scallops. Well, I'm Singaporean with a background. I actually love fish swim bladders. <laughs> But she prefers there's no trace of that in her wine. Additive free 
is better. Absolutely. Yeah, that's right. I mean, essentially, the purer you are, the more environmentally friendly you are, I think that's always a bonus. But taste comes first. Oh, I was very impressed. Yeah, I mean, to me, they are a good wine first. If you wind the clock back 15 years, vegan products, vegan wines, organic products, organic wines may have been seen as having less flavour or, or not tasting as nice, but I think that's changed a lot. So much so that winemakers who once hid the fact their wine was vegan are now proudly advertising it. The 2018 wines that we're releasing will actually have a label tweak where Vegan Friendly finds its way onto the front label rather than being in the smallest of fine print on the back label. I would say you know, the biggest majority of people buy our wine for the quality that it is and then some will buy it because it's organic and you know, a smaller percentage will buy it because it is vegan friendly. So, But I think as years progress, I think it will become a larger selling point. Finish this rice. Cheers. 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 2018. <laughs> With the last of the Shiraz grapes picked, the Koleski family steals some time to enjoy the fruits of earlier harvests. The current release, 2017 Clary's GSR. Ah. Three of fish, beef and chook. It's John Koleski's 61st harvest, but he never tires of seeing his land thrive and deliver. It must be satisfying now that you persisted. <coughs> it, it is very satisfying that we did um, persist because well, we were nearly to the point at one stage we thought, do we really keep going with this? You know, we, it was pretty hard. In years to come, whether that's decades or 50 years or 100 years, I think people will look back on the, the use of chemicals from the 1900s through the 2000s and they'll see as a blip in food production and wine production in the world and go, what were mm. these people thinking back then? If your soil's in balance, your grapes are in balance. Mm. That, that's the whole thing. Mm. Yeah. It's like your human body. If you've got a good immunity system, you can withstand a reasonable amount of, mm. of more things. Re more resilient. More resilient. And in this family, that includes a reasonable amount of vegan wine. I think in years to come, you'll almost have to be organic. Like, it would be silly not to be. And what about with vegan? Will you have to be vegan? Mm, I, I think that'll be some years away yet. Yeah.